हेलो एवरीवन सो कैसे हैं आप सब लोग एंड आई होप कि अब आप सब लोग बहुत अच्छे से अपनी तैयारी को कर पा रहे होंगे आज से मैं आप लोगों के लिए जो आपकी न्यू एन आई हुई है उसकी ऑडियो बुक मैं आप लोगों के लिए प्रोवाइड कर रही हूँ और इसका एक्सप्लेनेशन के वीडियोस भी मैं आप लोगों के साथ में जल्दी शेयर करूँगी बाकी आप मेरे साथ में वो सुपर सीरीज ज़रूर देख रहे होंगे जिसमें मैं टॉपिक वाइज आपको एक्सप्लेन कर रही हूँ और साथ ही साथ में उसमें किस किस ईयर में कौन से क्वेश्चन पूछे गए हैं वो भी मैं आपको बता रही हूँ तो जो बच्चे नए हैं चैनल पे जिन्होंने अभी तक मेरे टेलीग्राम को नहीं ज्वाइन किया है चैनल को तो फटाफट से लिंक को देखिए और जाकर के डिस्क्रिप्शन से वहाँ लिंक दे करके उसको जल्दी से ज्वाइन कर लीजिए क्योंकि वहाँ पे मैं बहुत सारी चीज़ें ऐसी शेयर करती हूँ जो आप लोगों को यहाँ चैनल वीडियोज़ में नहीं मिलती हैं तो आज से मैं ये स्टार्ट कर रही हूँ न्यू एन ऑडियो बुक लेकिन मेरा आप लोगों के लिए सजेशन है नीट वाले बच्चों के लिए कि बेटा आप लोगों को पुरानी एन से ही पढ़ना है मेरे चैनल पर बहुत सारे बोर्ड्स के भी बच्चे ऐसे हैं जो पढ़ाई करते हैं जो सुनते हैं जो देखते हैं तो ये ऑडियो बुक्स मैं उनके लिए बना रही हूँ ताकि वो जल्दी से इससे रिवाइज़ कर लें और जैसे ही नीट का सिलेबस आगे इन फ्यूचर कभी चेंज होता है तो ये आपके भी वहाँ पे काम में आएंगी और थोड़ा सा एक्सप्लेनेशन वाले वीडियोज़ आप जरूर देख सकते हैं क्योंकि उन एक्सप्लेनेटरी वीडियो में मैं नीट के क्वेश्चन किस किस पैराग्राफ से कब आए हैं वो इंक्लूड करूँगी तो इसलिए आप लोग वो जा करके ज़रूर देखिएगा ताकि आप लोगों को एक रीसेंट और जो करंट वे में क्वेश्चंस किस तरह से पूछे जा रहे हैं वो पता चल जाएंगे बाकी आप लोगों को फोकस अपना पुरानी एन पर ही रखना है ये स्पेशली बोर्ड वाले बच्चों के लिए अभी ज़्यादा है आगे इन फ्यूचर आपके लिए भी हेल्पफुल होगी तो चलिए स्टार्ट कर दें ये यूनिट वन है जिसके अंडर में आपके फोर चैप्टर्स हैं दैट इज लिविंग वर्ल्ड बायोलॉजिकल क्लासिफिकेशन प्लांट किंगडम एनिमल किंगडम तो ये थोड़ा सा मैं यूनिट के बारे में भी आप लोगों के लिए पढ़ रही हूँ दैट इज डाइवर्सिटी इन द लिविंग वर्ल्ड Biology is the science of life forms and living processes. The living world comprises an amazing diversity of living organism. Early man could easily perceive the difference between inanimate matter and living organism. Early man defied some of the inanimate matter, wind, sea, fire, etc., and some among the animals and plants. A common feature of all such forms of inanimate and animate object was the sense of uh, or fear that they evoked. The description of living organism, including human beings, began much later in human history. Societies which indulged the anthropocentric view of the biology could register limited progress in biological knowledge. Systemic and monumental description of life forms brought in out of necessity detailed systems of identification. Nomenclature and classification: the biggest spin of such studies was the recognition of the sharing of similarities among living organisms, both horizontally and vertically. that all present day living organisms are related to each other and also to all organism that ever lived on this earth was a revelation which humbled man and led to cultural movements for conservation of biodiversity in the following chapters of this unit you will get a description including classification of animals and plants from a taxonomic perspective ernest meyer 1904 and 2004 born on 5 july 1904 in Kempton Germany Ernest Mayer the Harvard University evolutionary biologist who has been called the Darwin of 20th century million dollar line hai ye wali isse kai baar questions aa chuke hain so was one of the 100 greatest scientist of all time mayer joined harvard faculty of arts and sciences in 1953 and retired in 1975 assuming the little alexander agassiz professor of zoology emeritus throughout his nearly 80 year career his research spanned ornithology taxonomy zoo geography evolution systematics and the history and philosophy of biology he almost single handedly made the origin of species is diversity the central question of evolutionary biology that it is today he also pioneered the currently accepted definition of biological species is mayer has awarded the three prizes widely regarded as the triple crown of biology the belzen prize in 1983 the international prize for biology in 1994 and the kraft food prize in 1999 mayer died at the age of 100 in the year 2004 इस ऑडियो बुक की खास बात तो मैं आप लोगों को बताना भूल गई कि अभी तक आप मेरी ऑडियो बुक सुनते थे और आपको मैं दिखाई नहीं देती थी बट अब जितनी भी ऑडियो बुक्स आएंगी उन सब में मैं आप लोगों को दिखाई दूंगी आगे इन फ्यूचर जब मैं इनको पॉडकास्ट में अपलोड करूंगी तो डेफिनेटली नहीं दिखूंगी बट अभी जो है आप इसमें मेरे को साइड में अपनी ऑडियो बुक बनाते हुए देख सकते हैं और एक रिक्वेस्ट है मेरी उन बच्चों से जो मेरे को बहुत सारे बच्चे ऐसे कमेंट करते हैं कि मैम आपको एक्सप्लेन करना चाहिए था मैम आपने इसको क्यों नहीं एक्सप्लेन किया आप सिर्फ पढ़ रही हैं हम भी पढ़ सकते हैं तो बेटा जी ये सिर्फ एक ऑडियो बुक है ऑडियो बुक का मतलब होता है कि जो लिखा है वो सीधे सीधे आपको पढ़ करके सुनाया जा रहा है ताकि आप उस चीज़ को फास्ट मैनर में पढ़ सकें 
और बहुत ज्यादा बेनिफिट होता है इनका क्योंकि जो चैप्टर आप खुद अगर पढ़ने बैठते हैं तो उसको पढ़ने में आपको एक दो घंटे लग जाते हैं और वही चैप्टर आपको मैं फटाफट से रिवाइज करा रही हूँ सिर्फ आधे आधे घंटे में या पौन घंटे में जितना लंबा वो चैप्टर है डिपेंड्स ऑन दैट सो ये एक ऑडियो बुक है एक्सप्लेनेशन के लिए मैंने सेपरेट वीडियो ऑलरेडी पहले भी बना रखे हैं और मैं नई एन से स्टार्ट करके आप लोगों के लिए एक्सप्लेनेटरी वीडियो भी जल्दी ही अपलोड करूंगी तो आप लोग एक्सप्लेनेशन के लिए उनको देखिए ऑडियो बुक और फास्ट मैनर में रिवाइज करने के लिए इसको देखिए तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं फाइनली हमारा फर्स्ट चैप्टर है चैप्टर वन द लिविंग वर्ल्ड हाउ वंडरफुल इज द लिविंग वर्ल्ड द वाइड रेंज ऑफ लिविंग टाइप्स इज अमेजिंग द एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डनरी हैबिटेट्स इन विच वी फाइंड लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म बीट कोल्ड माउंटेन्स डेसिड्यूस फॉरेस्ट ओशियंस फ्रेश वाटर लेक्स डेजर्ट और हॉट स्प्रिंग्स लीवर्स स्पीचलेस द ब्यूटी ऑफ गेलोपिंग हॉर्स ऑफ द माइग्रेटिंग बर्ड्स द वैली ऑफ फ्लावर्स और द अटैकिंग शार्क्स इवोक्स एंड अ डीप सेंस ऑफ वंडर the ecological conflict and cooperation among members of population and among populations of a community or even the molecular traffic inside a cell make us deeply reflect on what indeed is life this question has two implicit questions within it the first is a technical one and seeks answer to what living is as opposed to the non living and the second is a philosophical one and seeks answer to what the purpose of life is as scientist we shall not attempt answering the second questions we will try to reflect on what is living 1.1 diversity in the living world if you look around you will see a large variety of living organism and be it potted plants insect birds your pets or other animals and plants there are also several organism that you cannot see with your naked eye but they are all around you if you were to increase the area that you make observations in the range and variety of organism that you see would increase obviously if you were to visit a dense forest you would probably such a much greater number and kinds of living organisms in it each different kind of plant and animal or organism that you see represents a species the number of species that are known and described range between 1.7 to 1.8 million important hai this refers to biodiversity or the number and types of organisms present on earth we should remember here that as we explore new areas and even old ones new organisms are continuously being identified as stated earlier there are millions of plants and animals in the world we know the plants and animals in our own area by their local names these local names would vary from place to place even within a country probably you would recognize a confusion that would be created if we did not find ways and means to talk to each other to refer to organisms we are talking about hence there is a need to standardize the naming of living organisms such that a particular organism is known by the same name all over the world this process is called nomenclature obviously nomenclature or naming is only possible when the organism is described correctly and we know to what organism the name is attached to this is identification in order to facilitate the study number of scientists have established procedures to assign a scientific name to each known organism this is acceptable to biologists all over the world for plant scientific names are based on agreed principles and criteria which are provided in international code for botanical nomenclature icbn you may ask how are animals named animal taxonomists have evolved international code of zoological nomenclature iczn the scientific names ensure that each organisms has only one name description of any organism should enable the people in part of the world to arrive at the same name they also ensure that such a name has not been used for any other known organism biologists follow universally accepted principles to provide scientific names to known organisms each name has two components the generic name and the specific epithet this system of providing a name with two components is called binomial nomenclature this naming system given by carolus linnaeus is being practiced by biologists all over the world this naming system using a two word format was found convenient let us take the example of mango to understand the way of providing scientific names better the scientific name of mango is written as mangifera indica let us see how it is a binomial name in this name mangifera represents the genus while indica is a partic particular species or a specific epithet other universal rules of nomenclature are as follows number 1 Biological names are generally in Latin and written in italics they are latinized or derived from latin irrespective of their origin number 2 the first word in biological name represents the genus while the second component denotes the specific epithet 
Third, both the words in biological name when handwritten are separately underlined or printed in italics to indicate their Latin origin. Fourth, the first word denoting the genus starts with a capital letter while the specific epithet starts with a small letter. It can be illustrated with the example of Mangifera indica. Name of the author appears after the specific epithet that is at the end of the biological name and is written in an abbreviated form, example Mangifera indica lin. It indicates that this species was first described by Linnaeus. Since it is nearly impossible to study all the living organism, it is necessary to devise some means to make this possible. This process is classification. Classification is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters. For example, we easily recognize groups such as plants or animals or dogs, cats or insects. The moment we use any of these terms, we associate certain characters with the organism in that group. What image do you see when you think of a dog? Obviously, each one of us will see dogs and not cats. Now, if we were to think of Alsatians, we know what we are talking about. Similarly, suppose we were to say mammals, you would of course think of animals with external ears and body hair. Likewise, in plants, if we try to talk about wheat, the picture in each of our mind will be of wheat plant, not of rice, any other plants. Hence, all these dogs, cats, mammals, wheat, rice, plants, animals, etc. are convenient categories we use to study organisms. The scientific term for these categories is taxa. Here you must recognize that taxa can indicate categories at very different levels. Plants also form a taxa, wheat is also a taxa, similarly animals, mammals, dogs are all taxa. But you know that a dog is a mammal and mammals are animals. Therefore, animals, mammals and the dogs represent taxa at different levels. Hence, based on characteristics, all living organisms can be classified into different taxa. This process of classification is taxonomy. External and internal structure along with the structure of the cell, development process and ecological information of organisms are essential and form the basis of modern taxonomic studies. Hence, characterization, identification, classification and nomenclature are the processes that are basic to taxonomy. Taxonomy is not something new. Human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about the various kind of organisms, particularly with reference to their own use. In early days, human beings needed to find sources for their basic needs of foods, clothing and shelter. Hence, the earliest classification were based on the uses of various organisms. Human beings were since long not only interested in knowing more about different kinds of organisms and their diversities, but also the relationships among them. This branch of a study was referred to as systematics. The word systematics is derived from the Latin word systema, which means systematic arrangement of organisms. Linnaeus used systema naturae as the title of his publication. The scope of systematics was later enlarged to include identification, nomenclature and classification. Systematic takes into account evolutionary relationships between organism. 1.2 Taxonomic categories Classification is not a single step process but involves hierarchy of steps in which each step represents a rank or category. Since the category is a part of overall taxonomic arrangement, it is called the taxonomic category and all categories together constitute the taxonomic hierarchy. Each category referred to as a unit of classification in fact represents a rank and is commonly termed as taxon. Taxonomic categories and hierarchy can be illustrated by an example. Insect represents a group of organisms sharing common features like three pairs of jointed legs. It means insects are recognizable concrete object which can be classified and thus were given a rank of category. Can you name other such groups of organisms? Remember, groups represents category. Category further denotes rank. Each rank or taxon in fact represents a unit of classification. These taxonomic groups categories are distinct biological entities and not merely morphological aggregates. Taxonomical studies of all known organisms have led to the development of common categories such as kingdom, phylum or division for plants, class, order, family, genus and species. All organisms including those in the plant and the animal kingdoms have species as the lowest category. Now the question you may ask is how to place an organism in various categories. The basic requirement is the knowledge of characters of an individual or group of organism. This helps in identifying the similarities and dissimilarities among the individuals of the same kind of organism as well as of other kind of organisms. 1.2.1 Species 
Taxonomic studies consider a group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities as a species. One should be able to distinguish one species from the other closely related species based on the distinct morphological differences. Let us consider Magnifera indica, Solanum tuberosum potato and Panthera leo lion. All the three names indica tuberosum and leo represents the specific epithet while the first word Magnifera, Solenum and Panthera are genera and represents another higher level of taxon or category. Ye genus may have one or more than one species specific epithets representing different organisms but having morphological similarities. For example, Panthera has another specific epithet called Tigris and Solenum includes species like Nigrum and Melanogena. Human beings belong to the species Sapiens which is grouped in the genus Homo. The scientific name thus for human being is written as Homo sapiens, 1.2.2 genus. Genus comprises a group of related species which has more characters in common in comparison to species of other genera. We can say that genera are aggregates of closely related species. For example, potato and brinjal are two different species but both belong to the genus Solana. Lion, Panthera leo, leopard, Panthera paradis and tiger Panthera tigris with several common features are all species of the genus Panthera. This genus differs from another genus Felis which includes cats. 1.2.3 Family The next category family has a group of related genera with a still less number of similarities as compared to genus and species. Families are characterized on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive features of plant species. Among plants, for example, Three different genera, Solenum, Petunia and Datura are placed in the family Solanaceae. Among animals, for example, genus Panthera comprising lion, tiger, leopard is put along with genus Felis, cats in the family Felidae. Similarly, if you observe the features of a cat and dog, you will find some similarities and some differences as well. They are separated into two different families, Felidae and Canidae respectively. 1.2.4 Order you have seen earlier that categories like species, genus and families are based on a number of similar characters. Generally order and other higher taxonomic categories are identified based on the aggregates of characters. Order being a higher category is the assemblage of families which exhibit a few similar characters. The similar characters are less in number as compared to different genera included in a family. Plant families like Cornwall, Willacy, Solanaceae are included in the order Polymonials mainly based on the floral characters. The animal order Carnivora includes families like Felidae and Canidae. 1.2.5 Class This category includes related orders. For example, order Primata comprising monkey, gorilla and gibbon is placed in class Mammalia along with order Carnivora that includes animals like tiger, cat and dog. Class Mammalia has other orders also. 1.2.6 Phylum Classes comprising animals like fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds along with mammals constitute the next higher category called phylum. All these based on the common features like presence of notochord and dorsal hollow neural system are included in phylum chordata. In case of plants, classes with a high, few similar characters are assigned to a higher category called division. 1.2.7 Kingdom all animals belonging to various phyla are assigned to the highest category called Kingdom Animalia in the classification system of animals. The Kingdom Plantae on the other hand is distinct and comprises all plants for various division. Henceforth we will refer to these two groups as animals and plant kingdoms. The taxonomic categories from species to kingdom have been shown in ascending order starting with the species in figure 1.1. These are broad categories, however taxonomists have also been developed subcategories in this hierarchy to facilitate more sound and scientific placement of various taxa. Look at the hierarchy in figure 1.1. Here you can see figure 1.1 that is the taxonomic categories. Uh, species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, kingdom. For example, as we go higher from species to kingdom, the number of common characteristics goes on decreasing. Lower the taxa, more are the characteristics that the members within the taxon share. Higher the category, greater is the difficulty of determining the relationship to other taxa at the same level. Hence, the problem of classification becomes more complex. Table 1.1 indicates the taxonomic categories to which some common organisms like housefly, man, mango and wheat belong. Here is the Table 1.1 organism with their taxonomic categories. 
here is the common name man housefly mango wheat and their biological name man i will read one by one man homo sapiens genus homo family hominidae order primata class mammalia and phylum and division is chordata housefly biological name is musca domestica genus musca family muscidae and order diptera class insecta and division and phylum orthopoda mango mangifera indica mangifera is the genus and anacardiaceae is the family sapinidales is order dicotyledony class and angiospermy phylum or division wheat Triticum mestivum, Triticum is genus, Poesi is family, Poels is order, Monocotyledony is the class, and Angiospermy is the division of phylum. Now the summary. The living world is rich in variety. Millions of plants and animals have been identified and described but a large number still remains unknown. The varied range of organism in terms of size, color, habitat, physiological and morphological features make us seek the defining characteristics of living organism. In order to facilitate the study of kinds and diversity of organism, biologists have evolved certain rules and principles for identification, nomenclature and classification of organisms. The branch of knowledge dealing with these aspects is referred to as taxonomy. The taxonomic studies of various species of plants and animals are useful in agriculture, forestry, industry and in general for knowing our bioresources and their diversity. The basics of taxonomy like identification, naming and classification of organisms are universally evolved under international codes. Based on the resemblance and distinct differences, each organism is identified and assigned a correct scientific or biological name comprising two words as per the binomial system of nomenclature. An organism represents, occupies a place or position in the system of classification. There are many categories ranks and are generally referred to as taxonomic categories or taxa all the categories constitute a taxonomic hierarchy aur isi ke sath mein aapka chapter complete ho gaya hai aap log mujhe facebook page pe bhi join kar sakte ho motivational videos ke liye wahan pe main bahut sari motivational stories especially share karti hu to jab aapka mann kare to aap log wahan ja kar ke bhi sun sakte hain description mein main iska link aap logo ko provide kar rahi hu so see you soon in the next video jaldi se main iska explanation wala video bhi bana kar ke aap logo ke sath mein share karti hu तब तक आप लोग मुझे अगर इसमें कुछ चेंजेस कराना चाहते हैं तो मुझे आप फीडबैक कमेंट सेक्शन में दे सकते हैं ताकि मैं आगे आने वाली जितनी भी ऑडियो बुक्स हैं उनमें इसको अमेंड कर सकूं तो आप लोग जल्दी से मुझे जो भी चीज़ें इसमें अगर आपको कुछ चेंज करानी है कुछ चीज़ ऐड करानी है तो आप लोग मुझे कॉमेंट सेक्शन में बता दीजिएगा ताकि मैं उसको नेक्स्ट ऑडियो बुक में इंक्लूड कर लूँ तो सी यू सुन इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो टिल दिन जस्ट स्टेट यून विद मी बाय एवरी